Welcome to the American Ladder Institute Safety Training for Step Ladders. The objective of this training is to provide safe ladder practices. During this video presentation, you will be shown the proper techniques to select, inspect, set up, use, and care for step ladders. Ladders are useful tools that, when used properly, serve as a safety system for climbing. Working at an elevated height is, however, inherently dangerous and the safety afforded by a ladder is often circumvented by misuse. Each year, over 160,000 people are injured as a result of falls from ladders due to not following safety precautions. Most of the injuries are cuts, bruises, and fractures, but more than 300 result in death. Making a mistake while using a stepladder can change or end your life. Properly following the techniques presented in this training will maximize your safety when using a stepladder. To begin, let's examine a stepladder. The stepladder is a self-supporting portable ladder that is non-adjustable in length with flat steps and a hinged design for ease of storage. The stepladder is intended for use by only one person performing work on a level surface. The stepladder requires level support for all four rails. If this worksite condition does not exist, the stepladder is not the correct product for the job. The parts comprising a stepladder include Shoes. All four feet of fiberglass and aluminum stepladders are fitted with slip-resistant shoes. Shoes are optional on wood stepladders. Front and rear side rails. Steps. Spreaders or locking hinges. Optional bucket or pail shelf. Instruction and warning labels. And a top cap. Step ladders are manufactured in a variety of sizes, materials, and duty ratings. To select the right step ladder for a particular job, the following must be considered. Worksite environment. The worksite environment is the first factor in choosing the material from which the ladder is constructed. Ladder materials include wood, fiberglass, and aluminum. If the work to be done is near a source of electricity or requires the use of electrical power tools, an aluminum ladder should be rejected since aluminum is an electrical conductor. Electrical shock while working from a ladder can trigger a fall or cause your heart to stop, leading to serious injury or death. A clean, dry fiberglass or wood step ladder should be used. On the other hand, if there are no electrical power sources in the work area, an aluminum ladder may be lighter in weight and a satisfactory option. Next, length of the ladder must be considered. Step ladders range in size from 3 feet to 20 feet in length. Step ladders shorter than 3 feet are considered step stools and are not covered in this training module. It is unsafe to use a ladder that is too long or too short. Never try to extend your reach by standing on the top step, bucket shelf, or top cap of a step ladder. Doing so will increase the likelihood of losing your balance and falling from the ladder. The highest standing level for step ladders is the second step down from the top cap. This will be shown by a label on the ladder. The maximum work height is established by adding your height and reach to the highest standing level the second step from the top. Do not step or stand higher than the second step down from the top. Finally, calculate the total weight the ladder is to support. Do this by adding your weight plus the weight of your clothing and any protective equipment, the weight of tools and supplies you will be carrying, and the weight of any tools and supplies to be stored on the ladder while working. For example, paint on a paint shelf. Compare the total weight to the duty rating of the ladder, which will be shown on a label on the ladder. There are five categories of ladder duty ratings. Type 1AA, Special Duty, supports a maximum of 375 pounds. Type 1A, Extra Heavy Duty, supports a maximum of 300 pounds. Type 1, Heavy Duty, supports a maximum of 250 pounds. Type 2, Medium Duty, 
supports a maximum of 225 pounds. Type 3, light duty, supports a maximum of 200 pounds. Do not assume that a longer ladder has a higher weight capacity. There is no relationship between ladder length and weight capacity. The key to ladder safety begins with the inspection of the worksite and of the ladder. To properly inspect and secure the worksite, check overhead for electrical hazards or obstructions. Clear any clutter from where the base of the ladder will be located. Be sure the surface on which the ladder is going to be placed is free of anything slippery, such as water, ice, or oil. Be aware of environmental conditions. Rain, snow, and ice increase slipping hazards. Wind may cause instability while carrying, moving, and using stepladders. Block off the area around the ladder to prevent being knocked from the ladder by people or equipment. If you are working around a corner, put up signs to warn others of your presence. Ladders must not be placed in front of closed doors. The door must be blocked open, locked, or guarded. Although highly durable, a ladder can become damaged by improper handling, transport, fire, or corrosion. A thorough inspection should be made at the time of purchase and before each use. Never use a damaged ladder. To begin, examine the ladder for loose, damaged, or missing parts. Start the inspection at the bottom of the ladder. Make sure the shoes are present and secure. Moving up the ladder, inspect the side rails for dents, cracks, or bends. Along the way, check each step. Ensure the step-to-rail connections are free from damage. Inspect all hardware and accessories. Make sure the spreader braces are not bent and work properly. Rivets, joints, nuts and bolts must be tightly secured. All surfaces must be clean of oil, grease, and other slippery or sticky materials. When transporting a ladder to the worksite, caution must be used to avoid injuries, property damage, or damage to the ladder. If carrying a ladder solo, keep the front end slightly higher than the back end. Long ladders should always be carried by two people. When transporting by vehicle, secure both ends of the ladder and use care when loading and unloading from ladder racks. A ladder that does not pass inspection but is repairable should be tagged, taken out of service, and stored away from usable ladders until repaired. A ladder deemed not repairable, such as missing parts, having a damaged side rail or damaged step, should be destroyed and replaced. Absolutely never use a damaged ladder. A major cause of falls from ladders is improper setup. Using proper setup techniques will provide the ladder maximum stability and ensure your safety. To properly set up a stepladder, fully open and spread the stepladder so that all four legs rest on a firm, level surface, not on rocks or boards. Lock the stepladder's spreader in the fully open position. Never use a stepladder with the spreader in a closed or partially closed position. For example, never use a stepladder in the closed position and leaned against a wall. Stepladders are not designed for this type of use. Proper use of a stepladder will contribute significantly to your safety. Common factors contributing to falls from improper ladder use include haste, sudden movement, poor quality footwear, and lack of attention. Follow these guidelines for safety when using a stepladder. Before taking the first step onto the ladder, make sure you're in condition to do so. If you feel tired or dizzy, or are prone to losing balance, stay off the ladder. Do not use a stepladder if you are impaired due to illness, drugs, alcohol, age, or physical handicap. Also, wear slip-resistant shoes with heavy soles to prevent foot fatigue. For maximum traction, clean your shoes of sticky or slick substances. Always read warning labels and instruction labels on the stepladder prior to use, or contact the equipment manufacturer with any questions. Continually face the ladder as you climb, work, or descend. Always keep three points of contact with the ladder when climbing. 
holding on with two hands and one foot, or two feet and one hand. When climbing the ladder, you must keep your hands free for climbing. Items should be raised by alternative means, such as a tow line, placing them in your tool belt, or having them handed up to you. Keep the middle of your body positioned between the side rails and do not overreach or lean while working. Overreach is one of the most common causes of ladder accidents. Don't overreach. Only the step ladder's front steps are intended for climbing or standing. Note, however, that twin step ladders are available with steps on both the front and rear and are specially designed for two users at the same time. Climb and descend slowly and surely, avoiding sudden movements. Do not jump or slide down from a ladder or climb more than one step at a time. Do not straddle the step ladder or sit on the top cap. To move the ladder, first descend, then relocate. Never move a ladder while in use. A ladder must never be placed upon other objects, such as boxes, barrels, scaffolds, or other unstable bases in an effort to obtain additional height. Never use a ladder for any purpose other than the one for which it is intended. Now that you are familiar with proper ladder selection, inspection, setup, and use, let's discuss how to care for the ladder. To maximize the ladder's lifespan, the following techniques should be observed. Regularly lubricate the ladder's moving parts. Use caution when lubricating, making sure to avoid getting any lubricant onto the ladder steps. Keep the ladder clean, particularly of foreign matter that is conductive. Such substances can allow electrical current to travel over the surface of a fiberglass or wood ladder. Firmly support and protect ladders from heat, weather, and corrosive materials. Do not use a ladder as a storage shelf. Store ladders out of the reach of children. You have now been presented with the proper techniques to inspect, set up, safely use, and care for step ladders. This concludes the presentation portion of the stepladder safety training. We encourage you to examine your newly acquired knowledge by completing the training's final test. You may also benefit from the other ladder safety training courses available from the American Ladder Institute or a review of the written safety information on ALI's LadderSafety.org website. If you have any questions, comments, or wish to know more about ladder safety, please click on the Contact Us button on this screen or the Contact Us link on the LadderSafety.org website. This training module was developed and produced by the American Ladder Institute. The ladder manufacturers listed on your screen are members of ALI, whose active participation in projects like this training module exemplifies their commitment to ladder safety education. To learn more about the ALI, visit ALI's primary website at AmericanLadderInstitute.org.